pearl is used in various ways. One of them is just wrapping around the existing command line functions or, or applications or commands or whatever. So if you are a Unix system administrator, let's see, or if part of your job is doing system administration on Unix Linux systems, then often you need to create a new user. The way to create is, is to call the add user command of, Uni of Linux and uh, either provide flags or answer the questions uh, it asks you. If you happen to need to create a couple of things on that machine based on the user and on the first name and the last name of the new person, then you will need to express ex run these various applications, type in the user the first name and the last name of that person, and uh, if that name is um, a little bit complex, then uh, you oh, you might make uh, typos here and there, and it's just frustrating. So, for example, if you want to create the user who is called Fubar, which is really a simple name, uh, I would call this command. I provide the home directory, and uh, for some reason in this company the home directory would be optbfoo, or before that actually, why it's bfoo, so he's, the user is called foobar, I'm not sure actually is he, uh, and in this company, as in every other company, there is some kind of a policy, what username to provide to users. So in this company they decided that they wanted to have the first character of the last name, b in this case, and the first name, all in lowercase, and that would be the username. And because of that, this, this is the home directory, and for some reason this company wanted all the home directories to be in the slash opt directory. Don't ask. All co every company has its, it, if its options of what, opinions of what to do, what to do. So, in addition, we wanted to set, set the geckos, which is just a description of the, of the person, which is usually the, usually the, the name, and uh, we had to set the disabled password flag, which doesn't really matter, it's just a flag for, for or, or purposes. But the point is that I don't want to remember all this every time I create a new user. So instead of that I created a wrapper script, a Perl script, that would get just the first name, the last name, and it would check either actually whether uh, the f these are acceptable names for all purposes, and uh, that's a restriction here, and um, maybe if someone comes along who, whose name doesn't fit these restrictions, then we'll have to amend the, the script, but for now it, it worked. And then uh, it will, based on do two, those two parameters, it will generate these, this command basically and execute this command. So how does it work? Uh, we have a hard-coded place to hold the, the location of the add user command. And then we are using the get op long module and the get options function to parse the command line options of this script. So how does it work? Uh, I usually have this uh, at the beginning, so I, if, if not argv, so if there is no parameter on the command line, then I already call usage. So let's, let's see how does it work. If uh, I run Perl create user, then oh, without any parameter, then I automatically get usage and then the name of the script and the, va the the parameters that I need to give. Now there are f name, l name, and this run flag. And uh, what is there? F that is that for? So first of all, let's see this usage function. The usage function is at the, at the bottom of this, this file is just a simple function that would be able to accept a message, which we haven't given in this case and uh, print, out, print out that message, and afterwards it will print out the word usage, then the name of the file, so in that's $0, so $0 always holds the current, the name of the current script, and instead of hard coding the name of the file which is create a user, uh, I put here the, this variable, which if, the us if someone renames this script, then it will still reflect the new name. So it won't be hard, the old name. Then that's good. And then I just describe the, the options, uh, and that's it. And then exit the, the script. So that's the usage function. It's very simple. I keep adding this kind of thing to to modules, to, to scripts. Though there are different uh, solutions for this, and uh, we might see some other ways. So this is the first thing I call. If the 
if the user hasn't given any argument, then I'll just call usage explaining him what kind of arguments uh, we are accepting. Then this is how we accept the arguments. So we still get options in a different way of working, but it can work in this way as well. We create a hash that will be filled with the flags that uh, are getting from the command line, and then the get options gets a reference to this hash, where it's going to put the values, and then a list of the description of the flags we accept. So we accept the f name flag with a string after it, and an l name flag with another string after it, and the run flag. If there is some problem within the, this get options, for example, the user provides name instead of l name or an f name, then the usage will be called again. Now, what is this run flag? After all, we need only f name and l name. So this is. Uh, I added this mostly because of, uh, so I can show you how to run the script, but it's actually a very useful thing. It, um, I added it so only if the run flag is given, only then the, the script will actually execute the command. Otherwise it will just print out that we need to add the run flag. So sort of this is usually called a dry run and we now default to dry run. So if the user doesn't provide a run flag, nothing really happens. And if the user provides the run flag, only then the actually add user command is executed. So it's a safe way to run the script and see what is the command it's going to execute. It, it, it can be really useful because here I'm printing out the actual command I'm going to execute just because before executing. So having a, a sort of dry, dry run mode is, is useful to to see uh, without execution something. So that's what we have here. And once we get, got the parameters from the user, we need to check whether we actually really got both the f name and the l name, f, and if they fit the requirements we have here. So what we have these two conditions. First of all, we check if the f name, okay, just a second before that. So we saw that Actually, in the opt, we, you already saw it, in the run, already saw it, that what get options does is takes the names of the flags, and those are going to be the keys in this hash, and the values are going to be, the values of the hash are going to be the values that were provided here, so minus minus f name, the value of f name foo is going to be the value of f name, and in the case of just a simple flag that has true false mode, then just that value will be set to true if the flag is, is there. So the, the value of the, the, the run key in this case. So opt f name, opt f name is supposed to contain the value the user provided with mi minus minus f name. So we're checking if there is no such value or if there was such value but it didn't fit this regular expression, then we call the usage with some kind of a message. So let's see. For example, if I uh, run um, f name and provide uh, a dot d, then I get, sorry, this is the wrong script, Perl create user, that was the old script from the previous example, f name a d. So it provides me that the first name must be alphabetic, so that's the problem, uh, and then it gives me the usage again. So this is the error message I, I got. And so what you see here is that it needs to be it needs to have an F name and that F name needs to match this regular expression. If you look it look at the regular expression you will see that it from the beginning it needs to ha be lowercase or uppercase letters, one or more of them, and that's it. End of the string. So we are not really flexible in accepting non-ASCII, uh, non-Latin characters here, but uh, well, that was that that worked on our in our case. Uh, probably, if you want to make it a more a li little bit more international, then you would accept more uh, letters here, also Unicode maybe, but then you will have to think how you generate from there the username. 
So that's the for first name, the for last name, it's exactly the same, exactly the same condition, just now with the uh, L name uh, variable, the key. And then we have to generate the various values. To, so the username is, as we said, is the first character. You see, this is the substring of the last name and the first character. So starting from zero, one character. That's the first character. That's the substring get concatenated with the full F name. And the whole thing is lowercase then. So the lowercase ver version of these two parts concatenated, that's the username. And the home directory is in just slash opt and the username. Then we just print out the username, so someone who is running this script will see that what's, what's the username that will, was picked. And then we are generating the actual command. We are putting them in, into a variable, so we can both print it out and run it. The add user holds the pass to the add user command, then we provide the home directory that we calculated here, then the fixed flag, then the geckos is just, we ran out of screen, the geckos is just that, the first name and the last name put together within double quotes, and then the username. And the nice thing you can you see in that I was using double Q, so I can use quotation marks embedded within this string. So this is the how the command is uh, created. So if I run now the script with f name foo and l name bar, then it will tell me that this is the command it's going to execute. It generated the bfoo, it provided the geckos, and here is the name of the user which is rubbed around because the screen is a little bit small here. And then it tells me to need that it needs the, the run flag in order to actually do something, but I don't want to execute it right now. So that's it. This is a nearly nice way. It will avoid me typing the name several times maybe. It will avoid uh, making other mistakes. And uh, it's going to especially be interesting if you have various of these scripts or maybe you enlarge the script further to set up maybe the mailbox and set up uh, the username on another machine and I don't know various other things that you need to do and automate in a Linux system.